everyone and welcome to Mom Your Own Way. I'm Lily Coco and today I am so, 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 so excited. It might be one of my favorite episodes to come because today my guest is Elaine Perry who is a mom, a gem, an incredible woman, but more so than anything, she has been my like role model for when it comes to motherhood. I absolutely admire her relationship with her daughter. I love who she is as a woman, as a wife, as a mother. Like everything she does is just so full of love and you can see that like flowing out of her daughter. And I, I love the love that she gives not only to her family, but to the world. And so I can't wait. To, I'm literally sitting with my knees crisscrossed like I'm ready for a story time because I'm so stoked. Um, all right, let's talk to Elaine because you guys Role model, amazing woman, let's get into it. Let's do this. Hello, Elaine. You look beautiful. Hi. Hi. I don't know if you heard me earlier. I'm literally sitting crisscrossed like a little kid, excited <laughs> to chat with you. I uh You were so sweet. Thank I, you. I, sweet introduction. <laughs> but it's true. It's absolutely true. The And I'll keep saying this over and over again, but uh, as I mentioned before we hopped on live, the love that flows from Emmy, I know stems from the love that you gave her as a kid, the affection, the respect that you gave her. You can just see it flowing through her and her relationship and socialization skills. I mean, I met Emmy and you guys... Was it five years ago? Eight years ago? No more. Um, Man, how old is she now? She's like a teen. She's seventeen, Oof. going to be eighteen. What the heck? I Who met her as a little girl. I mean, yeah. she was like eleven, I think, right? Maybe. She, I think, she, you first met her when she was nine. Man, isn't that crazy? That's like so. She's gonna be an adult. Thing. Yeah, I hate that, but. I mean, I hate that and I love that. <laughs> I bet because you're like saying bye to the baby. Of course, she'll always be your baby. But welcoming this new adventure of this like, I want to say new best friend as an adult, but you guys seems like you've always been best friends. We are best friends. And I find it so funny that uh, there's so many people out there or like those, you know, those mommy blogs that say you can't be your child's best friend. And I think they're totally, I mean, just my opinion, <laughs> I think they're totally wrong because who in the world could know that sweet little person that you brought into this world better than you yeah. and who wants the best for them and who would give them, you know, advice from the heart that would lead them in the right direction to where you hope you would want them to go. So Absolutely. yes, I am proud to be her best friend. And I mean, I, I don't apologize for it. <laughs> and you shouldn't. I mean, you, seeing that and hearing what you have to say about it, you can see that that actually works. I think the problem is maybe people have a wrong definition of a best friend. I think they connected mm -hmm. to being like a pushover and letting the kid walk all over you. But you shouldn't even let your best friend do that. You should have a yeah. best friend. You should be able to trust them. They should be able to tell you when something's wrong. They should be able to be honest with you from the heart instead of always saying, yes, do this, yes, do that. Like if somebody's doing that, they're just a yes man, yes woman, not a best friend. And so I think it almost comes down to, you should start looking for better best friends if if that's your definition of it. Because I, I think you're absolutely right. You, you create, you bring this beautiful person into the world and you know each other's heartbeats. You literally know anything and everything about that person. You, you try to guide them and teach them into this world. And, and along the whole time, they're teaching you so many things. So you're kind mm -hmm. of both like reborn and you're growing up together and you're learning together. Yes, there's the age difference, of course. And so you have more experience. But aside from that, the things that you learn along the way, you're learning them together. And I, I so want true. everyone, I want all the moms to be best friends with their kids. I know I can't like push that upon people and be like, y you need to do this. Yeah. And, it's but so I, funny because I've had like, I've had moms go, you have such a strange relationship with her. And then on the other hand, like a couple years down the road, they're having issues, you know, with their child. And I'm like going, well, if you just took a step back and weren't as, you know, as not, not necessarily mean, but as strict and as, as, and not necessarily there for them, 
Yeah. And you may have a different relationship because what you want to cultivate when they're young is you want someone who's going to come to you Mm -hmm. through um, every hardship and every concern that they have because they know you're going to be there. Yeah. And, and, you know, it gets different as they get older because, you know, when they're little, they look up to you and everything you'd say is absolutely magical. And you are a princess. And I remember <laughs> when I was little, we had princess gowns and I made sure to buy adult size princess gowns. So we would play princess together because I love that. that's what we did. It was, yeah. you know, it was so weird. But and David had his Prince Charming outfit because he's the first Prince Charming she's ever going to know, right? I mean... such a good example for her. That's such a good example. Like, that to me means she's growing up with an example of what a best friend should be, what a gentleman should be as her father is to her. She gets to see this beautiful relationship between you and David as well. So knowing what love, what marriage, what all of that goes into it. And being able to be silly with her. Like, that's... When she, you know, now she's growing up, she's going to be 18. And of course, you'll always be her best friend, but she already has her other friends. And like, you have set her up for such success because from this relationship that she knows with you, she has high standards and high expectations of what to expect from a best friend to not be lied to, to not be talked down to, to not be disrespected by anybody. And whether it comes from a best friend or a female figure or a male figure, because of course, If she's dating or whatever, you want her to feel respected, loved, appreciated as a partner, as a best friend, and not in any way anything else. Because I think if we grow up with those relationships within a family that, like, let's say an authoritative one, then we think that's normal. And so then if we get into a relationship with a male figure, then we think, oh, if he's being authoritative, it's normal. It's like, well, that's not the way to show love. It's just what you've used, it's where you're used to maybe. Yeah, it's so, yeah, that's so true. And um, it and it's so funny because as she's grown up and as she, you know, gets older and, and she goes through different friend groups and, and, and different social aspects, but y- you, you see the struggle she goes through and you see the, you know, the different concerns and the questions that she has, but being so close to her, you grow up with her and she's comfortable enough to come to you and say, hey, what's going on. And I think the most important thing for me and what I've learned is um, it's not necessarily always giving my opinion or my advice because, you know, of course I grew up a long time ago. So things are different. People are different. Kids are different. The world's Um, different. The world, the world is crazy different right now. Yeah. So I always approach a conversation with her and I just say, do you want me to hear what you're saying and just be there to listen and give you a hug after because I'm happy to do that? Or do you want my opinion? And do you want me to try and fix this? And mm. I'd say 90% of the time, she just wants me to listen. Wow. And and that's when you foster someone who's actually going to be open with you and not keep secrets from you. And that's so, so important, I think, nowadays, because I think that's where a lot of times kids can go down the wrong path because they're not really open to, you know, talking with their parents or, or feel safe or feel like they're not going to be judged. Or they feel like they're going to get in trouble. So if Mm -hmm. I do this, I don't want to tell anyone. I'm not going to tell my parents and they're going to be getting in Mm -hmm. trouble. Yeah. I oh, love- I've told Emmy, I say, if if there's ever a situation, we have a code word. I don't know if you've heard of this, but. I love this already. <laughs> Our code word is Malibu. I shouldn't be saying this because, but not that anybody's going to hear me say yeah. this. Better, but anyway, um, so if she's in a situation where she feels threatened or in trouble or, or she just doesn't feel comfortable, you know, with the people she's around or at, she can just text me Malibu and then I'll call her back and I'll say, Hey, um, there's an emergency here at home and I need to come pick you up right away. Are you okay with that? Done. She's not embarrassed. I know she's safe. All is good. Amazing. That's literally the definition of a best friend. Because if my friends and I used to do that, like if you go um, out on a date, it's like you send them something. It's like, oh my gosh, get me out of this date. Like, I don't know what's going on. Can you call me and get me out of this? You know, like you trust your best friends to help you in those situations. And the fact that she can 
trust you, her mom, to do that, to make her feel safe. Because I think that's the big part of being a mom is making sure your kid feels safe and they feel comfortable to come and talk to you. And I love your advice about, okay, do you want me to sit here and listen? Because sometimes we just need to share stuff and vent it out. Or are you seeking that advice in some sort of a hint, whether it may work for you or not? Are you seeking some sort of advice? But I think that tip is... I mean, that's good for any relationship with your significant other, with mm -hmm. any family members, with your friends, because sometimes that's what happens in communication is maybe we're seeking to be just heard, but somebody just comes back at you with all of this advice and you're like, dang, I feel like I wasn't heard. I feel like you're just trying to solve all this stuff, but maybe I'm not looking for a solution. I'm just looking to be heard. And that's, exa and that's exactly where I got that from was, um, Dave, you know David, sweet David. He's you guys are amazing. He, he's amazing. And I am so blessed to have him as my partner in life. And um, we, I mean, he's just, he's perfect for me. But you guys are amazing. I, I admire you guys' as marriage. I admire the parenthood. I'm just such a fan. Like, I'm literally a fangirl of how you're raising your family. I think oh. it's such a, like, beautiful example. Because I know it's something she's going to, look upon and and see and know that that's what she deserves and that's what she's gonna get and she won't settle for less she's not gonna let anyone do her any harm because you taught her and showed her examples of it in real life it's not like you just read her stories and said hey this is what happens in these princesses but in our life this and this and this like she gets to see it real life example of this princess story because you and him will dress up for her and put a real life love story family and togetherness that she gets to see day in and day out. Like, I, it just blows my mind of how beautiful that is. Oh, thank you. And uh, another thing to tag on to David. So we were talking and I, I noticed that this was before Emmy. He would just like immediately come at me because he's such a techie brain. So he would immediately go, how can I fix this? I want to make her feel better. And I would just go, you need to stop. I just need you to listen, mm -hmm. you know? And, and he eventually like, got that advice and started taking it and it made me feel so validated and heard and and that's where I got it with Emmy I'm like if I want to be heard and if I want to not you know have someone come in and feel like they can fix everything then I have to do that for her because she needs that sounding board she needs a sounding yeah. board to for someone who's not going to judge her who's going to want what's best for her and who's going to you know do everything in their power to make sure that you know no matter what happens she's going to feel loved yeah yeah it's such a like an empowerment move too because sometimes if somebody's just giving you advice it could seem like oh, they're just looking to fix it because they think that I can't do it myself. But I know I can do it myself. I'm just I'm just kind of talking. I'm having this conversation because I just need to get this out. I need to bounce some ideas off and then I'm going to come up with it myself. And so mm -hmm. as it helps you in your relationship with him, of course, like she's going to feel empowered because she's going to say, oh, my mom believes in me that I can do this. Yes, I can bounce these ideas off of her and share this stuff with her because she's not going to judge me. Like you said, not going to, you know, do this or the other. She's just going to be here to hear me and then encourage me to solve it on my own. And because she's capable of doing that, you're enabling to do like, ah, uh, no, I'm it's true. It's very true. And then um, and I mean, same for like, you know, if she does something wrong, you know, and, and, you know, in the moment, I always say, even with David, I'm like, don't correct me in front of people. You mm. always have my back in front of people. You may not have to agree with me because that would mean like, you know, you're doing the wrong thing too. But if you always have my back in front of people and then you correct me after. So like, let's say for instance, you know, when she was a little one, Emmy would be like, you know, she would do something and I'd be like, okay, you know, let's talk about this later. It's okay, you know, this play date's closed, da, da, da. And then I'd wait and I'd see what she was saying and see why she was reacting that way. And I'd say to her, how can you make this better? How can you make so-and-so feel better? You know, mm -hmm. what do you think happened? Why do you think he was crying? Or why do you think, you know, um, why do you think they're not talking to you right now? Yeah. And But you just wait a little while and you let them you know, let it sink in and let them understand what they did. And then you go ahead and go, 
okay, so let's talk about it. And then you help them fix it rather than you fixing it. I love that because that way they're learning how to solve their own problems and understand mm -hmm. other people's feelings or behaviors or situations instead of being told what to do. Because often when we're just told that we're doing something wrong or we're doing something bad, we almost want to go into like defense mode and start deflecting things and say, no, I didn't do that. You know, you feel accused. Um, that and on top of that, it sounds like you're using like responding to the dilemma or issue or situation instead of reacting because sometimes when mm -hmm. we see something let's say you know she made somebody cry whether she did whatever the situation was but then you can just I don't jump even remember. in I, I mean i'm just trying to think of like yeah you know those situations <laughs> yeah i mean i doubt I'm sure it happened i'm sure she did <laughs> but sometimes you know i talked to another mom uh and she was talking about her toddler and her baby and one time she like looked over and she saw the toddler like kind of ripping at her baby and so at first she was like why are you dragging him you know because at first you want to react but then if you like come around the corner maybe the baby's reaching for a fire or sharp object so of course the toddler was actually saving the baby but in moments when things happen you don't know why it's like oh the baby's crying what did you do go in a time out it's like well let's talk about it what was the situation oh you were actually trying to help because then you get down to the point and everyone kind of learns what to do in the situation instead of just assuming like oh, I did a bad thing, mom's now mad at me, um, or any of those, because then we kind of, I heard this thing that really sticks in my mind, that like what we say to our kids becomes their inner voice. It's true. It's very true. I've heard that too, and I, I strongly believe that. And I, I sometimes will, uh, I will hear things that I'm saying to myself that I'm like, oh my gosh, that is terrible. Like I would never say those things to a best friend or anyone else. Like I'm sometimes I'm so mean to myself, and that's like I had a biological weird biological father story I was like abused when I was little and so l those little different things still live inside my head and not till I started paying attention to them that I'm like who is this speaking I don't talk to myself that way why am I hearing these like awful words awful things to myself I'm like abusing myself almost which is mm -hmm. sick but I want to make sure that the things that I say to my daughter that she hears encouragement that she's strong she can do it she can do it all and like let's take time to figure things out we don't have to react immediately to things we just need to take time sometimes so but it's I I love the I I want to know like literally day by day what you did with her almost because like I, I want to have that relationship with my daughter I I I want to raise her to be independent and do whatever she wants to do. And at the same time, I never want her to leave because I just want to hang out with her all the time. And, and so, it's so when funny I... Same. I don't want her to leave either. And, <laughs> and what's so funny, it's funny that you say that because we're discussing college now. And Oh, man. Like, yeah. And she, at first, you know, this was before COVID. She's like, I'm really thinking Cambridge or Oxford. And I'm thinking, oh, no, my heart, you know. And then, <laughs> we're going to have to move. <laughs> Yeah, and um, but recently she, I mean, actually just this morning she came in and she goes, you know, Chapman has a really good film school, mommy. And she goes, and I could drive there and then I could come home to you. And she goes, you know, she goes, uh, school is about four years. And she goes, I don't want to miss those four years with you and daddy. And I was oh my like, God. my heart. <laughs> I was <sighs> like, are you kidding me? That is the sweetest thing. And yes, of course, do I want her to go to an Ivy League school? Yeah, that would be a dream. But would I rather have that time with her? Because at the end of the day and at the end of our lives, who cares, right? It's, yeah. it's about our relationship and it's about the memories we make with her and, and, and the things that she carries on to give to her children. So yeah. I, I was just so, I was so happy when she said that, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Because she's choosing you you've been she's choosing you i think mm -hmm. a lot of times people think like oh i will be authoritative and i'll make sure that they follow these rules and i'm going to do this stuff and it's like okay but then will your parent will your child come home for thanksgiving do they look forward to coming home would they choose you would they choose you to be close to you because she's so talented i mean her talents and skills are through the roof so any school would be so so lucky to have her and she will succeed anywhere that she will go like oh, I, she is the name that she's adding to the school not the school that has a name i hope you know that oh thanks. i mean she's uh, god she's she's so amazing and you know her i mean you know this as her mom but like she's smart 
She's giving. She loves to share and just smile. Like she she wants to make others happy. She wants to make sure that everyone's having a good time in a really like kind and like safe way. Like she's just like pure joy. Like she just walks in and you're like, wow, you are really happy. And it's you're like really addictive. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. It's so true. And She's so transparent about it. Like the, sometimes you'll see some people and there's like a heaviness behind it, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we put on a different mask depending on how we act with certain different people. And with her, and this is just from like the little time we spent together, but like I, it's in, like it's in my head, like it's tattooed on my brain of how gentle and kind she was like through her heart and with everybody she talked and how like I loved seeing you guys on set how kind you were with her and in no way a pushover you were very respectful you were protective making sure she had everything she needed make sure she uh knew what she needed to do that she felt prepared and ready for and so I really admire that I mean it was so long ago it's silly because so much life has happened since I know, but I feel like it's just yesterday because it, yeah. it was such a huge part. I, I feel like it was a huge part of her life and all our lives, you know? Yeah. And um, I just feel like we got so close and we yeah. maintain friendships that will last a lifetime. And there's certain uh, projects that you get involved with. And, and luckily she was, you know, we all were pulled together for some reason and and, yeah. and those people just kind of stuck, like, you know, you, Nori, Kevin, Jack, Angela, yeah. it's just, it, it's, it, it was truly a blessing that we were all together in the same spot. And I think we all kind of, um, I think all our personalities really just meshed, you know? It really, it's so weird because we all just kind of arrived. Nobody really knew each other. I think uh, Emma and Jack knew each other prior to yeah. when you knew Angela. Okay. But besides that, it seemed like it was all kind of new characters. I didn't know anybody. It was kind of like, oh, just drive to this location. And we were all kind of <laughs> just like figure things out. So we all just kind of show up on the beach early morning. Everyone's like, hi, nice to meet you, but let's jump in. And we had those tents and it'd be like, yeah, oh my gosh. Remember, we had to like carry, we had to carry her, like throw her in the ocean with a huge tail. I was so concerned and I thought she was so brave, but I thought you were very brave. I was like, oh my gosh, her. Her daughter's being thrown in a mermaid tail in the oceans and there's scuba divers just like on standby and I'm like what are they we were, doing they were navy seals and they, yeah. came up to, they came up to me and they're like don't worry we got her covered and they had this like knife on their um, <laughs> on their side and I'm like what's the knife for they go oh the recent shark attacks I'm like oh okay great Jesus but I was like okay we're do you know and like we're doing this. We're doing this. And I love the attitude that we had on set. It was like this family gathering. Like everyone just kind of got together. Everyone clicked. Like you said, the personalities really got along. Like everyone just had this chemistry on set of knowing like we trust each other. Like, you know, she had to put so much trust in us because we just had to carry her. And then she would have to get flopped and swim. Like I cannot... Kevin, uh, originally when I had uh, auditioned for the role, he wanted me to be like the mom that swims. And he's like, can you oh. swim? And I was like, oh, um, I can't swim. I would have been <laughs> terrified. I can't swim without a tail. Like, Can you imagine if you were that, if you were Hannah? Oh, I can't, Lord. I can't imagine. Thank goodness Kevin liked me and um, like as an actor and said, you know, we're gonna find a different role. And that's where the teacher and came to be. Perfect. And it was perfect. So it perfect. just made sense. And I was so happy that I didn't have to get thrown in the water. But then when I had to do it to Emmy, I was like, this girl is the bravest girl I've ever seen. To have your legs constricted and just be tossed by strangers into an ocean with Navy SEALs who have knives on their side. Like, in what world? In what world? And in what world would a mom be like, You've got this, Emmy. You got yeah. this. Yeah. But you, that's you what's so. This. You're amazing. That's what's so, so beautiful. Recently, so my baby's just starting to walk. And of course, she wants oh, to I get love into things. She's such a doll. 
I'm and obsessed. I mean, it's so cute because everywhere we go, like, I mean, sometimes we're like in a rush, so I won't stop. But she's like, oh, this would be so cute for Paisley. This would be so cute for Paisley. So I, she's, I think she sent like a little something her way at some point. Yeah. Yeah, you guys sent the sweetest, sweetest care package with these cute little outfits and this beautiful book. It's like a mom book. It's got recipes, little like tricks, little stories, little fairy tales. I love that book. And Paisley loves reading in books. So it was absolutely perfect. Uh, Oh, she's starting to walk now and she's starting to move. She's she's really just on the go. And I've learned that when they're in risky play, you don't want to say like, be careful, because that kind of just instills fear and it doesn't, it's vague. It doesn't actually tell them what to be careful for. It's like either watch your step or this could be sharp. You need to be specific, but it it also just instills this kind of fear yeah. of regular things. And instead you want to kind of either be quiet so they can focus on the task at hand because they need to concentrate. They need a lot of concentration on mm-hmm. like, you know, put one foot in front of the other or the encouragement kind of works, you know, still give them that time to focus on it, but also support them because they can do it. And I've noticed it with my little girl, if she's struggling with something, she'll ask for help. And then if she, I'm like, oh, do you need help with this? Or do you want to try doing it again? Because you got it. And as soon as I say, you got it, she goes, I got it. And she, she does it. That little, little push, little encouragement. Magic she feels, work. Yeah. And she feels like she's ready. And she takes on these things that I'm like, girl, you are impressive. How are you doing this? And then it's, you just feel that like support, that encouragement. And when it comes from your best friend, like Emmy's having from you saying, you know what? They're going to throw you in that water and you are going to do great. And she, you and may she flop did around great. And get, you may flop around and the wave may hit you a bunch of times and you may have to do this for a couple hours and be freezing, but you got this. <laughs> I mean, what strength in yeah. that girl. She yeah. said, okay, and she, but I, I promise you, she knew she could do it because she had you by her side and she, because you've built this strong relationship with her where she can trust you and be open mm-hmm. with you and she knows that you're not going to send her in the wrong way and so she knew, hey, nothing can go wrong. If anything, my mom's right there. Yeah. How amazing. And my mom has my back, so if something go- does yeah. go wrong, she's going to stop this. You know, yeah. and she's gonna make sure I'm okay. Yeah, it was so funny because I, I were you there at the um at this when we had to do the dive tank and she had to do like those. No, but tell me about it because I heard a little about it. It was like a big shark tank where she had to like kind of learn to swim, and I think she filmed with Hannah at that point, right? Yes, and it she had to she had to free dive fourteen feet in the water. Yeah, that's with three of me. Along with her tail on and she's like, I got this, I got this. And I'm like, you got this, you got this. And then behind the scenes, I'm like behind the monitor going. Yeah. And she literally goes down and she's like, I got this, I got this. She just took a, and she didn't learn how to, you know, take care of her ears, you know? Mm, Okay. So she comes out of the water after an hour and she's like, uh, she goes, my ears just hurt a little. And she she says to Kevin, she's like, I just need some Tylenol, a glass of water, and I got this. And she go, he's and he's like, well, wow. do you want to take a break? And she's like, no. And she goes, she goes, I, do you have gaffolding tape? And he's like, yeah. And he goes, she's like, I just need to tape up my feet. She pulled out her feet, and they were totally ripped raw because her feet were a little like this part was huge on her and that part had started to grow small on her. So she had these- It was like rubbing against, oh man. But she just taped it up. She got back in there, took her Tylenol and she was done. I was like, she impressed me. I was like, man. Yeah, she, she's, and and that's where the, um, when Edward came up with that, uh, the shirt, Emmy Tough. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I was like, okay. And you know, yeah. you just have to have this smiley face as a mom. She's got this. You got this. I can help with the tape. This is all good. I may yeah. not think this is a bright decision right now, but you know what? She's going to be happy about it. And she's going to be happy that I was there and I said, go for it. So. And then she yeah. followed through and committed and like, didn't, not that it'd be quitting in any way. I mean, it's totally fine. Take a break. But like, she felt so confident and sure that she could do it and she could do it. 
Mm -hmm. she wasn't wrong I think a lot of times we have this fear that's like well maybe I can't or maybe I need to be careful or maybe you know like and we don't take that leap or that jump or that whatever it might be it might be an everyday activity it might be swimming in a shark tank <laughs> <laughs> she is so amazing it just blows my mind but it's something that you said earlier that I really re is resonating with me and I want to continue doing is like when you said have my back when it comes to your partner or your kids, any close relationship, just have my back, like right here, right now. I trust you to have my back. Later when it's you and me, we can hash it out. You can let me know that you didn't think it was the best way to do things or maybe what can we work on for next time or, mm -hmm. but in the moment, especially when it's something that could be so unsure and so mm -hmm. wobbly, I mean, that decision could have changed a whole bunch of things if she yeah. didn't feel supported by you. Mm -hmm. it's so true yeah and even like you know with our spouses it's like just have my back like and and that means like sometimes you don't say things that you know sometimes you have conversations and the conversations aren't necessarily hey don't say this to somebody else this is just between you and I because you're not going to have those conversations because it's you know husband and wife normal conversations so yeah like even David and I came up with something oh the files on the network you know so then we just shut it down and then we talk about it later. Done. I love that. I love that. It helps so much within the communication. And again, I love that it always seems like you guys have this really happy lifestyle. And I'm sure there's certain things that come along and those are things that we don't normally post on the social media, nor should we, I guess. I never really believe in like letting your laundry dry out for laundry. <laughs> yeah and everyone's like oh everyone just posts their happy pics so i'm just like why would you want to see people like crying all the time i think it's all right to be honest about certain things but like certain things happen within a marriage or a family i don't think they're supposed to live on the internet for everyone to see i i don't know why they should um yeah. but you guys and have this have... really supportive family yeah we do and it, it's um but on the other hand i think you know I think it's important in the within your family unit to know that it's okay to be not as strong as you put out there. And and it's okay to, you know, want to cry and it's okay to just, you know, want to just cuddle and watch a movie and just not think about what went on that day. Like Emmy has I don't know if you're on it, but Emmy has a a, a private account called Emmy the Strange and I'll, I'll never forget this sweet little post that she put up and it was of her crying. And she wrote this um, beautiful poem about how tears are power and mm -hmm. how, how tears not are, don't just show how weak you are, but they show in essence how strong you are because you're able to communicate those feelings and show how, you know, how you're a true person. Right. Yeah. And, and um, so that was that I, I agree with having to, you know, keep that part away. And and I think a lot of us keeping that part away from society is society has become so judgmental and just mean. Everyone's you know? so and, mean. What is that? I don't. What is that? I don't it's know. It's rough to watch. It's rough to watch. Before we hopped on, as I was saying, um, I'm like trying to join all these mom mom groups and like share things. And um, it's really opened up my eyes of what's going on in like m mom world. And mm -hmm. some things you see and some things that people comment, you're just like, you would never say that in real life. Right? If you were standing face to face with that person, you would never. So what makes you feel so strong and so righteous to say some of these like really negative things it was like it's kind of scary how i don't know how to feel about it. i'm like do the people feel empowered that they can voice their opinions because in that sense i agree with it but in some sense i'm like when did everybody just get so harsh i know i i ask myself that all the time i'm i feel like i don't know if it's because social media is so prevalent right now and it's everywhere there's there's instagram there's twitter there's twitter is like a haven of hate right i mean oh my gosh 
It's just like and, these uh, quick little like stabs, just mm-hmm. little comments. Back, you know what I was thinking um, two nights ago, but I was thinking, you know, if you walk through the streets now, it's just like everyone's kind of filming something. There's some sort of filming or photo or anything. And 20 years ago, you could just walk down the street and get to your destination. It wasn't like, hey, I'm going to the dentist. Hey, I'm on the thing. So on one end, aside, I'm like, man, it's weird how much it's changed and then there's just all of this content. But on the other side, I'm so happy for it because some things I love learning from and certain, like, I love following Emmy. I love seeing what she's doing. I love seeing what you're doing. And so in that sense, I'm like so happy that it's available and I can stay so connected without like calling you guys every week, just checking up on you all the time. But like, I can see what you guys are up to and her birthday party was so beautiful and like, Thank you. Just, yeah, I did that in two days. Oh my did god! Did you really? Yes, because we didn't know what was going on because of this whole Omicron thing, right? And so yeah. um, I'm like, okay, Emmy, what do you want? And she initially she wants a vampire ball. I'm like, okay, that's not gonna happen. But thank you. I love the idea. I love, I love that it's like an idea for like a high school prom, you know, like this, it's a really big idea for an entire high school, but she's yeah. so creative that she's like, this is what I want for a birthday. I, I love that girl. It, it, yes. And, and you know, her 16th was, uh, she wanted a movie on the lawn. So it was so was, beautiful. And this was stark in the middle of COVID. We were so strict with different um we had to have it out on the lawn we had to you know make sure there were only most 30 people so Mm. i was like okay you know what this is her sweet 16 and and Mm. i you know i had a cool sweet 16 so i'm not gonna let her suffer because this whole world is bringing us all down i'm gonna make it what it can be and be as beautiful as it can be and she's just gonna have a wonderful memory from it so we did that and you know the people who showed up for her and all her friends and um i wish i could have invited every i wish you could have been there i wish i could have invited everybody but like having 30 people i'm like going who do i invite for this right so yeah but so then her 17th i said she's like oh mommy you did so much for my 16th party you don't need to do anything for my uh, uh, 17th and i'm like what i gotta do something and so i'm like calling around i'm like okay tea party let's do it so i sweet idea we did the tea party and it was i i called them two days before and i said hey is there any option for us and they happen to have an outdoor area and we did it. It was fun, and it was just it, it was it was just nice to be able to be together and 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 see each other face to face, and and be able to you know sing for her and just have some normalcy in this weird yeah. two years. Yeah, I feel I feel bad for everyone who's going through all this stuff and having to deal with it. It's a lot of confined things. People don't know if they're going to be able to work. They're stuck at home. People can't go to school. I feel really bad for kids because it's they want to be out and about they want to be doing things and it's so restrictive and then the learning's kind of online and so it's just a whole mambo jumbo of things um and so it's just been a real kind of trial period for a lot of people but what i love is that you're putting in the time to make sure you have you seen the movie is it in and out it's the feelings movie yes i love that Uh, what is it called out inside out right inside Inside out. out Inside yeah. out. You know how they talk about the core memories? Yes. When somebody builds a core memory and that what those are the moments that really define them. That's what you're doing. You're creating these core memories with her. Not not just for her, but with her. And so they're core memories for you, but for her, this is what's deciding who she is as a person. She's growing up with like this love. And so and a mom who says, you know what, through all of this, we're gonna do what we can. And this is going to be in her memory forever. Like she might not remember the little things that are going on, but she can always look back and say like, oh my gosh, we had these amazing like time, the celebration to see people and be with people. And it's not necessarily about like, oh, it's so big. And like, it's just the people who are there and the time that you guys are having, like that's the important things. And those are the core memories that she's going to have. That's, oh, you know, off subject. 
I wanted to ask you, because the way that you are a mom is, again, so spectacular to me, but is that the way you were raised? Did you have that as an example or is this something different? You know, it's so funny that you say that. Um, my parents were divorced okay. and um, they divorced when I was one. And oh, okay. um, so I was raised until I was 12 by my grandparents who were the most loving, uh, most caring, giving, selfless people I have, I could ever, you know, imagine in this world. And um, then my dad got remarried when he, when I was 12 and I had this abusive stepmother. Wait, and, tell me more. Yeah. So she was not kind. She was very jealous of me. She it just, she would lock me outside of the, we had double gates and she'd lock me outside of the, uh, outside of the house prior. And I think a lot of who I am is, I think there's two paths you can go when you experience that kind of trauma or that kind of, you know, sadness in your life. You can either choose to be like that person and go down that same road, or you can go, I am never, ever going to make my baby feel that, feel unwanted, unloved. And, um, and I chose the second and I'm like, she is going to have all of me every day, as long as she needs me. And, and even when she leaves, she's going to know I'm still a phone call away because I didn't have that growing up. And then my mom, uh, God bless her soul. She passed away when I was 30. Um, mm -hmm. She had a problem with alcohol. So we, 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 when we loved, we loved hard. And when we fought, we fought hard. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why I'm not really a fighter because it's just, it, it just brought so much sadness and so much anxiety and just, and, and this just harsh feelings about, you know, my parents that, and I, I adore them now and I, and I, I love them. And, um, I, I miss my, it's the funniest thing is I miss my mom. Right. I, I really do because as bad as some parts were, there were so many amazing, great parts. Right. Yeah. And I am who I am because of what I went through and yeah. I am very grateful for what I've been through because I was able to persevere and be a stronger person because of that. And maybe had I not gone through that, I wouldn't be this way. Yeah. So I, and, I'm okay with that. And that would also reflect then on the way that you would be raising Emmy because literally the way that the love that you want to pour into her is a reflection of the things that you, I guess, wish happen to you or making sure that the other you know flipping it yeah. from the way you were raised it's so interesting i one of the things i was kind of intimidated by is like i don't know if it's real or not but you kind of hear that like mothers and daughters can be really combative there could be a lot of either jealousy or like comparison or there's some mommy issues that kind of happen and um again if they fight they fight hard because usually they're like too similar or you know anything like that and I, I was trying to navigate the waters because I want to make sure that we, I, I don't want any of that with my daughter. I, I, I don't want any of that. I've heard some things that's like, oh, well, once she's like more prettier than you or whatever, I'm like, oh my gosh, my daughter is so much prettier than me, first of all. She's smarter, prettier, better. Like, I, yeah, what? like wait, what? <laughs> yeah. I was so surprised when I heard that. I was like, what are you talking about? This, it, First of all, issues. I created her. Of course she's prettier. <laughs> exactly. Thank I you. I need that. <laughs> yeah. And I, I want her to be smarter and better and funnier and more creative. And like, because I, I, I want to pass down anything and everything I know that she's willing to learn. And then she's going to have and more. Like, I, I want to give her any and every opportunity that she wants to have. I want to encourage her in anything she wants to explore. And like, I, I, I want to pick her up and just carry her like the wind just anywhere she wants to go and protect her from anything um but i but then i'm like maybe that changes maybe it's something that i'm just you know f romanticizing as a new mom because you hear things like oh when they're a baby they're fine but the terrible twos come around and the toddler stage preteens and they get so terrible i'm like i don't want to feel that way is that is that what happens to all moms because to me i don't think that's something that you faced but if you have, I want to know how you've gotten through it. Because 
I want that relationship that you and Emmy have. I want that with my daughter. I want her to, oh. I want her to choose me when she's choose. I'm going to cry. I want oh. her to choose me. I want her, I want her to feel so loved. I want her to feel like she can do anything. Yeah. And I, I, I'm going to learn. I'm going to make mistakes. But I just want to know the best way to hold on to this magical close relationship that we have. And I want to, I want to be her best friend mm -hmm. forever. I want to, I want to have what you and Emmy have. You know, honestly, we, gosh, I think it's really just building up that strong bond from the beginning. And I think you're doing that, you know, and, um, just re-emphasizing to her and not only saying it, but just doing it and being there for her. And because at the end of the day, the person who's going to, she comes home to you is you. And she, she wants to see that no matter what you're saying or what you're doing during the day, you're still going to be the same person to her. And have we had issues? We've, we've had issues. Have they been all out drag out teenage junk? No. <laughs> I mean, they, I mean, let me tell and I know what teenage junk is because I was like that with my mom, right? Um, but I am, I honestly feel so extremely blessed that I haven't had to go through that. And when I say we've had our issues, like we have our disagreements, literally it's like, and I think we both respect each other enough where we say, okay, I don't agree with what you're saying you don't agree with what I'm saying. Let's stop talking about this. And when we've had time to each discuss this and think about this, you come back to me, I'll come back to you, and then we'll have a conversation about this because it's not worth us being mean to each other because that's not what our core is. We're not, we're not mean to each other. We're not, we're not those people who are gonna fight. We're not, we're not doing this for TV. We're doing this because we want a long, amazing life together. And, yeah. um, and so I think it's just taking the time and just, you know, if there's an argument, you stop and just don't even, you know, and I think also every night, even if I'm upset with her or she's upset with me, which when we say upset, it's like little things like, oh, you didn't hug Felicity or, you know, or it could be, I'm really upset that you didn't take this out and that made me sad, or you didn't do this on your history homework because at the end of the day, you want to make sure everything's good. You want to talk it over. Like, and we always have conversations every, I'm not kidding, every night before bed because we, we talk through the whole day. We talk through what went on with her. She comes to me, mommy, what did you do? I, I just want to know what's going on. And then if something happens, that's when we discuss, hey, you really, I was really hurt when you said this. Now, you may not have meant that, but what you said made me feel like this. Yeah. Am I getting this the right way? And then she'll go, oh my gosh. And I'll tell you about 90% of the time, she's like, I didn't mean it that way. I was just busy and I was doing this. And because teenagers are in their own world and they're so, they have school, they have, they have their social, you know, problems. Like life and friends and yeah. life and friends. And, and Emmy has her auditions and she's, you know, stress with this and and doing all that but it's it's going i think it's really taking the time and saying hey you know this is what i heard this is how it made me feel now i want to really know are is this what you meant by this and if it's not what did you mean yeah because then we can move on from it mm -hmm. and i think if, if if people are reactive like you had said before that's when you get into those big drag out fights like you said this and I can't believe you made me feel like this. And that, but you just have to go, Hey, you know what? She had a hard day yeah. or mommy had a hard day. What's going on? Why would she do that? Mm -hmm. And I know she loves me. I know she didn't mean to hurt me and it certainly didn't come from a bad place. So let's talk it out. Yeah. I think that's good advice for anything. I, I, I'm at fault of that because sometimes when my husband's busy, he'll just kind of uh, express things a little bit quicker. And uh, I'm sure through like hormones or whatever, I'll kind of take it a little bit more emotionally and I'll get upset. Like, why would he say that? And like a then little late, snappy. 
Yeah, and then I'm not even that, just like more of a tone thing where I'm like, oh, yeah. And then if I bring it up to him, then he's like, well, that's not what I meant. And then I get stuck on, well, that's what you said. And he's like, yeah, but that's not what I meant. And we'll go back and forth on this. But at the end, if we just actually sit down calmly and because if I don't let it rest a little bit, I'll get in my own head about it of like, well, you, you said that, so you meant this and he he loves me. He's my best friend. Of course, he would never mean me any harm. Yeah. But I I just get into like a defensive thing and I'll kind of roll with it. And I want to learn to be better to accept that maybe that's not what he meant. So let's talk about it and let's make yeah. sure we know the truth that was meant to come out. And, exactly. oh, maybe you're stressed because this other thing is going on. And so the timing was kind of bad. Or maybe the way I phrase the question you thought I meant something else. And so maybe I actually hurt your feelings first Mm -hmm. and you were being kind of defensive about it, but actually being present in the moment to recognize, hey, let's see if this is what you actually meant. Mm -hmm. Because a lot, most of the time, it wasn't even supposed to come off that way. Exactly, exactly. And that's probably half of the conversations or the fights that I had with my mom. Like, I'm sure she didn't, mean half of what she said and or or how she said it and I took it that way and like there's you know now that she's gone I'm like oh my gosh you know looking back I'm thinking she said this and I remember that day and I remember what happened and I'm like going now that I'm an adult I'm like going she had a really hard day she was working all you know at at her nursing home she worked with alzheimer's and she comes home to deal with me and i'm having an issue with macaroni and cheese like (laughs) what like come on elaine give her some give her some slack here you know it's like i mean it's just you just have to take time and you have to realize that we all have our own way of processing things you know, and, yeah. and, and she may, and Emmy may process what I'm saying a different way than what I'm trying to make it come off as. And that's huge because I don't want her to feel like, you know, I'm on her case or, or saying something mean because I'm probably not, I'm trying to make her a better person, but in the moment and what I actually said and the words I used may not have been the right ones for her Yeah, because we all communicate differently. Yeah. It's so true. I also like the fact that you said, you know, taking that time when you know to that you must kind of agree to disagree, which I think mm-hmm. just Huge. it's a magical phrase, but I think it's gone out of the window in society. It's like people are so eager to disagree and fight about it and get really so true. So sad. Yeah, where I'm like, wh- why is it not okay? When did it become not okay to have different opinions or just people almost don't treat other people as humans they kind of get really abusive with words and say things and just like that's another person you don't know how their day is going you don't know what that comment might affect them in what way that could be the last straw for them like they you know you never know and it, it just saddens me from certain things that you see and how angry people get and how upset they get and you know there's been families that like split up and I mean it's just it's rough, but I, I like that you take the time to focus saying, hey, we might not agree on what you're saying or what I'm saying right now, and that's all right. So let's take some time, let's filter it through, let's think about it, let's try to understand the other person's point of view and then come back. And if we don't agree still, that's all right. We don't that's need to okay. say bad words to each other or see it coming from a negative way, because that's not always the case. Just because you disagree doesn't mean like, oh, I hate you, what you're saying is stupid. No. And that's the other thing, we've never, hate is not allowed in our house. I love that. It's just, it's, I will never ever come to a point where I hate David, ever. And I would never come to a point where I hate my dogs or I hate Emmy. So we do not allow hate in our house because that word doesn't exist in our love. Yeah, that makes sense. It just doesn't exist because if you really look at what hate means, right? It's it's one of the worst things you could possibly say to someone. Yeah, and and so, and you can't really come back from that. Like if you say something like that to someone, you can you can come back, but it's never really going to be the same. Yeah, you know. So that's one thing we 
swore, and this is David and I from before we had Emmy, that word is not something that is in our vocabulary. We just don't use it. I love that so much. It recently came up because somebody had mentioned something. It's like, oh, well, she might hate like vegetables. And I got stuck on that word. And I'm like, what if she just never knows the word hate? Like, if we, how would she know it? You know, like if we don't talk about it, we don't introduce it, we don't hate things. Because sometimes it's used for like things. Oh, I hate books or I hate like, we, I don't hate anything or anyone. And so I can't imagine myself saying it. Yeah. But I, I don't want it to come off and I don't want it to come as an easy word like oh I like this but I hate this like you can dislike stuff yeah. that's totally okay or it's or it's not my favorite yeah that's all right too but to yeah. hate something like you said it's such it's a so it's such a painful hurtful word there's this metaphor that I've heard being used with trust if you take a plate and you break it you oh, can yeah. put it back together but it'll never be the same mm -hmm. it's not that same plate and so I think as trust, that word hate is kind of like that. If you throw that word, you can apologize for it. You can do certain things. But like that's one of those that kind of just gets tattooed on you. And you're like, yeah, but you did say that one time. Like, did did I really piss you off that much? Did this thing, you know, and you start questioning yourself, which is oh, the yeah. last thing we want for our kids is them questioning themselves, I would think. Yeah. No, you, you just, I mean, you just never want to say that. I've it, it would be it's just such a sad harsh hurtful word you know and it's just like it, it's i and and the funny thing is i never ever use that for my parents despite what i've been through i never hated them because i always you know i always wanted to know better from them or i always wanted to understand why they did what they did or 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 make it you know or make it better or make it feel like it wasn't it wasn't because of me kind of a thing, you know, and, and, and as I grew older, of course, I learned that, right, because I, I, they were young when they got married, and, and, and they went through a lot of hardships, and, and, and their relationship wasn't strong, and, and that's another reason I, David and I, I, he asked me to marry him, and I said to him, oh my goodness, I said, it took like 20 minutes before he got an answer, he said, oh my God. I, I said, is this forever? Because I don't believe in divorce. And I said, if this isn't forever and you're not willing to work at it, then my answer is no. no. And he's like, okay. Um, and then we had a conversation when he asked me to marry him and I'm like, oh my gosh, I am that person. But it was important. You yeah, know? you're specific. Then, you're actually, yeah. I would think that makes things easier when somebody's specific and vocal about what they want because then it's you know it's clear yeah there's no like hidden stuff or you're trying to do something else something sneaky or whatever it's like this is my expectations and this is because it's not only for you but it's for the kids the beautiful daughter you guys didn't know you're gonna have at that point it's like because she gets to see that example of love and how people treat one another like that's in front of her every single day i want to learn that i want to be better at not taking things personal because i think that's one of my flaws is when something happens i carry it as oh i must have done something wrong when most of the time it has nothing to do with me but like certain you know in my childhood if like my parents at that time had a fight or whatever i, I would think oh i must have done something wrong and you i, I take that. it on myself um and i'm trying to let go of those things because I find myself doing it now still with small things, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, if the dog is barking, oh, I should have done better to make sure I left the door open and now I didn't, now I woke up the baby and it's my fault and I'll sit on it and kind of let it, uh, again, that really negative self-talk that isn't mm -hmm. beneficial, nor is it correct. Like, uh, I wouldn't let anyone speak to my best friend that way. I wouldn't let anyone speak to my daughter that way. So why am I letting myself talk to me that way? Because if I want to be the role model and example for my daughter, I want her to see me talk to myself in a positive way because that's what I want her to do. Because I can't just say, oh, you need to say kind words to, in your head to yourself. I need to make sure I'm showing up for myself and being an example that I'm trying to be. Um, yeah. But it's just one of those things that I, I really struggle at making sure not to take things personally and kind of separating those things and um i guess i'll come with time i i question a I lot of things you know. yeah I, I, 
I think I I think so, and I think I think honestly, you just have to. Um, I don't know if like you know, I don't know if it's time or it's just you know realizing that you are truly like a treasure and and everything you've experienced in life makes you who you are makes you that amazing mom so in the moments that you feel down on yourself or you feel like oh my gosh i should have done this and that's why this is happening you go yeah but you know what i did that i make a body butter line i i have a podcast i'm doing this i'm an amazing you know kick-ass mom and I want to be a better mom, but yeah. that's why I'm doing this. So, and you let the more positive, I think, affirmations and thoughts fill your head rather than letting those negative things fill your head. Yeah. And it'll eventually just, you know, hopefully go away because yeah. you are amazing. Thank you know you. that. You really I, are. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to tell myself that I'm a good mom. I think I'm a good you mom. You are. And I'm... I'm uh, I'm trying to tell myself, you know, it's kind of like a habit. When you change a habit, you got to just keep going and keep yes. doing. And so, I'm, you know, I'm telling myself, you know, the things that I, I know I am, but I question myself on constantly. And so it'll, you know, now I tell myself I'm a good mom. I'm a good woman. I'm creative. I'm funny. I am healthy. I, I, I am rich in, in the health that I have in the, the creativity that flows through me. And, I, when I say it, I believe it and I know it, yet sometimes, you know, something will happen and instead of responding with this gentle way, I'll react to myself in a negative way. And so as I'm learning to make sure I, because it's so funny because with others, I'm so much kinder and when it comes to myself, that's when I get a little bit more harsh. Uh, and so I want to start treating myself as I treat others and making yeah. sure as I'm responding to my daughter's needs or my husband's needs or my friend's needs, I'm also responding to my own needs and saying, hey, that's all right. Yeah. That's okay. Because none, none of this stuff yeah. is ever like that big of a deal either. It's like, and, all right. And, and the other thing is we're constantly learning. Like, I don't know everything. I will probably, you know, get into a bunch of things that I have no idea how I'm going to react or, or what I'm going to do with David, with Emmy, you know, and um, it, it's, we are constantly evolving as a person. And, and if you have that, you know, the, the core that, you know, you're a good person, you know, which you do, right. And, and you know that you can overcome what comes at you, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to, you know, figure out what to do in that moment. Because yeah. there's going to be new things that challenge you every day. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask, was there ever like maybe a time or a period or a certain stage that you really didn't know what you were doing and you questioned yourself a lot? You know, they talk about like the terrible twos or whatever, the preteen, teen years. Was there any time that you could think back of like, you know what, I really, or newborns, I don't know. Was there any time that you felt lost, felt like you didn't know what, what to do maybe? Oh, all the time. Really? <laughs> all, the, all the time. No. Um, you seem yeah, so put together and so confident in your way. Uh, you are and, so I, and I, 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 again, I see it as the product. I see that it works. And I keep saying that I admire it so much. And it's just, it's it's wild to hear that you, you know, I question we things. All, are, we all are insecure in certain areas, especially when it comes to someone we care about so much. Yeah. And we care about how they turn out. Uh, I'll, one instance was I remember when she was a baby and David was traveling a lot. So I was with her by myself quite a lot. I was carrying her on my hip as, you know, mommies do. And I quickly turned around because I was looking for the dog because he was barking. And I whacked her head on the wall. And I'm like, I just, oh, my God, I just damaged my baby. And uh, you know, uh, it was the worst yeah. thing. I, I had no clue. I, I mean, it was just, you know, I was scared out of my mind. I was sad. Yeah. And um, I mean, when she was a baby, she had this tumor on her uvula. And oh. um, yeah, at night she used to, it was crazy. She would turn blue and asphyxiate. And, and I would, I mean, I'd call like 911 because I'd be by myself and they'd come and, and just the, uh, the act of sitting her up would move the tumor. 
uh, which we eventually got removed. Uh, and wow. I just, I mean, there, so there was about six months where I was like, what am I doing? Why is my baby like not okay? You know? Oh my gosh, how scary. It was very scary. And they were like, did you give her Cheetos? I'm like, no, I didn't give her Cheerios, what? Cheetos, nothing. Like, what are you talking about? And Why is that the? Yeah, but so you take that and you go, okay, you know what? And so you take her to a doctor and you don't get the answer you want. So you take her to another doctor. And I think it's perseverance and making sure you go, you know what? I care about this girl and I'm going to find out and I'm going to get the best care for her. Did that and finally got it fixed. And, wow. um, and she hasn't had that issue, but we had one of those angel sleepers. So I knew immediately when she would stop breathing because of the angel sleeper. Wow. So that was a time. And then I'd say Emmy went through a period when she was a preteen and she was doing like dance competitions and all this you know, silly stuff on top of the acting stuff. And, and, um, there was one, uh, uh, director of the dance that was, uh, a huge part of, uh, of the program and huge part of what she was doing. And, and, um, it was a time when I had to just go, okay, what am I doing here? Why am I here? Because at one point there was a little boy who this dance teacher said was fat and came in and said, he was laughing and said, she, he's fat, I would never let him dance, you know, topless. And so Emmy in the class, and I was there, Emmy in the class says, that's not funny, that's mean. Wow. And I was so proud of her. But from that point forward, he started targeting Emmy too. And so it was, I was torn between, do I stand up for my child? Do I stay in this situation where I think she may benefit from dance? Yeah. Or or do I leave because this is not who we are and we do not stand for uh, bullying? And yeah. so I approached the owner of the um, of the dance uh, the, the studio the, program, the studio, yeah. mm -hmm. and I said, "Hey, this is what happened. Are you you know? Can we talk about this? Are you willing to discuss things with him?" And um, she's like, "No." And so I said, "Thank you so much. It's been great. We appreciate it." But I said, the important thing to me is that Emmy has the love of performing that she's gotten so far. And I do not want something, you know, that destructive to take away that love. Yeah. So we're going to just part ways right now. So that was a time when I was like, wow, and that's I a big so, decision. Yeah. And I was so unsure because I'm thinking, am I doing the wrong thing? Because she loved and And the sad part was she was actually sad to leave. Right. So I was going to ask how she handled it and how she felt about you know, ha having to leave? Did she understand their reasons? Did she? She, she understood, but she was still sad. And, um, and so it was just, it was just, you know, filling her with positive actions and positive outings and, and better friends who had, uh, you know, more for her and, yeah. and who understood her heart rather than someone who was going to break her down. Because yeah. that wasn't that wasn't positive, and that wasn't a good place for her, you know. And yeah. and I think you made the right choice because you know who knows what that person could have said to her that could have damaged, like you said, her love for performance or her love for dance. She could have you know stopped performing, stopped dancing because it could have been something so hateful that mm -hmm. you know if she comes home one day and says, "Oh, I hate dance." That's how you know, like what happened? What yeah. what did you do? What yeah. did you do to my sweet girl? Like, but you avoided that and you protected her from, from her ever saying no to something for her, you know, like that's, but that would be so hard because you know how much your kid loves something. So to say like, Hey, we can't go, go do this anymore. I mean, that's one of the hardest things you'll ever encounter. And I hope you never do, but it, it, it's pulling them f away from something they feel they absolutely love and they and they have this whole social circle right and yeah and and but you just know that it's it's breaking them down inside and 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 in the long term that's not going to be great for them yeah so yeah that was that was a huge struggle and that was something david and i had discussed and and he kind of came to a decision before i did Mm. But of course, I had to be the voice of it. So I was struggling and and trying to make 
the most of it and 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 do it in the best way possible and um and I'm and I'm happy I did it now and and yeah. you know what and I'm I'm happy that we didn't stay there cuz who knows who Emmy would be from now yeah you know she may be she you could know. be hating all that stuff. Like if something yeah. happened and if she got traumatized by the words or actions because mm-hmm. now the teacher has it against her because she stood up for someone else. Like she did the right thing. But of course, mm-hmm. anytime you set boundaries and someone doesn't like it, it's like, well, they're the toxic person. Like they're yeah. the person trying to do something negative. And so I think you did the right thing by protecting her because it allowed her to continue the love that she has for dance and performing and entertaining all the stuff that she loves that sometimes when certain things happen or somebody says something we we just say we won't do it I had a mom on my podcast previously and she said she went to college and she was writing she loved writing but her professor said she wasn't good and so she uh she stopped she stopped and she quit college actually and later she found out that she really loves writing and she now is back at it and she's a great writer wow it's those things where it's like Oh, just because this this one person had probably a personal... I mean, with writing, too, everyone has different style. With That's anything, everyone really has sad. different style with music, writing, cooking. I mean, there's just so many ways to do it. And so when a person comes in and kind of shuts you down with something that you love, too, and you're like, man, and if you see that person as the expert, you're going to believe them. Because you're like, yeah, oh, they must exactly. know. And so you'd want to give up and you might not want to pursue it and give up on a passion like that, which would be a travesty. Yeah, it would be. And and honestly, and the other thing too, is you have to deal with the, you know, your child then and, and you know, make it okay that she did react that way. And, and, and you know, say, hey, you did the right thing. You, d- it, it wasn't you. It's, yeah. you know, you did the right thing and this is the right thing now because of that happening. It's just not the right place for you. And now yeah. even like with with co- this huge thing with college, it's just like, I mean, this, this is a whole nother level. I'm yeah. like, and it's like, she's like, you know, mommy, I don't know. I, I mean, I just don't know if, you know, uh, I feel like I'm already ready to make films and do this and blah, blah, blah. And you just have to, you have to take those conversations and you really have to listen and, mm. and hear what they're saying and based on their performance and what they've, you know, excelled in and what they're doing and what they're capable of. Yeah. You have to, you know, you have to, I think a huge thing for children is you have to believe in them. Yeah. Yeah. So, no matter where she goes, I mean, I'm going to, like, you know, Chapman versus Cambridge. Would I be proud to say, hey, my kid at Cambridge? Absolutely. But I'm going to be just as proud to say she's at Chapman. Yeah. And the other thing is, who cares what anybody else thinks? Yeah. Is she considering not going to college as well? Is that what she's kind of saying? She feels ready without it? Or? Um, no, she, this was, okay, this was because she was thinking of doing business instead of film. Okay. And I was like, because, you know, daddy's like the techie guy and yeah. like the business aspect. And I'm like, and of yeah. course I did the musical theater and I'm like, I'd like you to do film, but okay. Yeah. You know? And um, When and she so could do now, both, she could major in one, minor in the other. I mean, there's different well, ways. you know, at UCLA, USC, you can only do, you have to commit to one. I guess that's better because then you're putting all your eggs in one basket instead of spreading yourself thin. So yeah. So at that Chapman, she actually is going back towards film, which is great. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, she's such and, a performer. And, and she has like, dad right now for business, for anything that she might need help with. And through that, I yeah. think through the experience, she can learn. Oh, the other day she was, she sat down and she's like, I'm just going to uh, work on something today. And I go, okay. She's like, um, and then she calls me down at eight o'clock. She started at 8 a.m. around there. And then she calls me down at 8 p.m. She has a full website. Wow. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah, a full website created, all her poetry, um, a whole bunch of like her artwork. And oh then my a shop goodness. where you can buy things with her artwork printed on them and her poetry printed on them. I'm like, did you just learn how to do this? And she's like, oh, yeah, I just, you know, thought about it. Wow. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, cool. And that's the other thing is giving her the 
freedom to express herself and 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 try things that's so huge with kids don't pin them to one certain thing like if you want you know if you want paisley to be a dancer that's great this was huge for me growing and when she was growing up i tried everything with her mm. i would bounce things off of her and just go okay whatever sticks sticks i put yeah. her in tennis right the ball hit her in the forehead not her thing <laughs> Just not her thing. I but you tried in. it and you know that. <laughs> yes, and, and, and the other thing that I, I, I told her though, and we tried volleyball, we tried basketball, and there were certain things she liked. She didn't love, but she liked them. And, and the thing that was important to me was I, this may have been good or may have been bad, but I told her Perry's aren't quitters. I said, so this is what we're doing. I said, you okay you're you expressed you want to do tennis right so we're going to try this six-week tennis program she comes home from tennis one day hits her in the head i don't want to do tennis anymore i go i totally get that and you do not have to do this after your six-week period because we're not going to quit this i said I we signed that. up for this we committed to it we are now a team and once it's completed we never have to touch a tennis racket again how did she react to that she's like it's so funny at first she was like oh mom i don't want to do it and then i'm like sorry that's you know that's who we are we're not we, yeah. i said you don't quit in life yeah. and now till this day i'll be like i don't feel good i don't want to go to that she goes mommy perry's aren't quitters it's so important the things we say to them those are the things that stick these core memories of hey yes. my mom told me we're not quitters and she's going to carry that she's going to tell it to her kids like how oh, yeah. important wow. and that's probably why she put that tail on and hopped in the ocean yep you know yep that's exactly <laughs> it i still can't believe she did that i'm so I, impressed I, by I, that girl oh my gosh and now she has her own website how cool yeah it's crazy like she did it in a day i was like oh and she this will blow your mind she wrote her own screenplay yay I Wait, know. that's amazing. Yes. So she, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a full on screenplay with like a love triangle and yes, it's, it's insane. It's a fantasy drama. It's so cool. It's called Cloaked and she hopes to make it like a trilogy and yes. And she wants to be, I, I don't know how it's going to happen or if it's going to happen, but we say it is. Yes. And we're there behind it. So yes. um, she, uh, you know, she's already working on number two. Wow. So, yeah. It's it's pretty cool. It's about, and it's so fun. And that's another thing, supporting your child and just, you know, believing in them. And, and I think it's not only supporting your child and believing in them, it's showing them and mm -hmm. doing the things that make them know, hey, my mommy gets me and she wants me to succeed because yeah. she told me this story about how she wanted to write a script when she was 15, right? Mm. Is, which is when she started writing this and now she's completed it. Wow. But she said, I wanna do a story on witches and, mm. and you know, I just wanna learn about them and, and know the history and, and see why they were so bad and why they were mistreated or if they were really the bad ones. So, you, so what did we do? We went to Salem Amazing. and I'm like, let's go, let's do this. Let's, let's dig deep, let's find out, you know? Yeah. I'm with you. And, and, and that inspired more of her creativity and, and also a really great family trip for us, but she got to learn so much being there. So I think it's so important to, to when you say you believe in them, truly believe in them and like, you show know, up. yeah, show up, be that person. And if they say, Hey, I want to, you know, I, David's really good about it. He's like, Oh, she's like, I want to, you know, take my driving test. He immediately goes on, sends all these links. This is what you need to do. This is what blah, 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 blah. she immediately goes to the you know web, the email, and does everything. It's like, wow. yeah. But it, I think it's important to not only tell them you're there for them, but and believe in them, but do it. Yeah, and that's something the the role model example of. We don't just say we're gonna do something. We we do it. Mm -hmm. We do it. Yeah, we do it. Yeah. I love that. I love that so much. Elaine, I have to go feed my baby really quick before <gasps> we go. Before uh, we go, is there one example that you'd love to pass? Uh, one, like, advice, I mean, that you'd love to 
pass on? I mean, you've already given so many, so I don't want to oh, limit gosh. it to one. But is there one that you like, hey, I think this was the most important to build this relationship that I have with my daughter that you'd like to pass um, on to other moms? Such a great question. Um, I think, honestly, just show them every day. And even if you're not saying it, just show them that you love them in different ways because they'll remember. And when you think they're not listening or they're not watching, they are. And mm -hmm. be that example of love that you want them to continue when you're gone, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because, you know, like even just, you know, her with her rescues foundation and, and everything, you know, how I treat the dogs is going to be a prime example of how she acts towards dogs, which yeah. is amazing now. And, and if, you know, how I, how I handle situations with David, she's going to be like that when she, you know, grows up and, and is with her partner. And um, that's going to be weird when she gets married. That's going to be crazy. Yeah. I'm sorry. I said it. I, I don't know what I was thinking. You'll be there. <laughs> I have you'll to be there. You'll be like, what the? I have to be there. I can't, I can't even process it. I can't process that she's 18. Well, Can almost you 18, imagine? But no, Can I really imagine? struggle. Because and, I, and I see her every day. I see her different pictures, so I know she's grown. But when I think about her, I picture her as the nine-year-old I met. But I know she's older. I know yeah. that she is. But when I think of her, she's, you know, that little girl. And I know it's not. I know she's grown up. Yeah. And so. Oh, and the other thing is, this is huge. And I learned this, I don't know how I learned this or where I heard this, but I think it's been said a million times is do not make temporary decisions or do not make permanent decisions based on temporary feelings. I love that. Because yeah. in the moment you could be so upset and you can say something so hurtful that will damage for the rest of your life. Yeah. But that feeling will probably go away the next morning and then if you end up saying something that you can't take back, it's going to leave an indelible mark on her heart. And yours. I mean, the guilt that and you would mine, feel inside. Yeah. It, it hurts both parties. But yeah, that's such good advice. Yeah. Do not make permanent decisions that on a temporary feeling because we go through these feelings and our, I mean, and with our hormones and with their hormones, God, they're yeah. all over the place, you know, but if we if we just try to take a step back, going back to taking a step back, mm -hmm. you know, tabling it for a little while and then talking about it and seeing, hey, how can we handle this in, you know, in a better way to show that we truly love each other and we want the same outcome. Yeah. And then all the stuff that's coming, it's coming from love. It's not coming exactly. from any, it doesn't come from emotions that could be negative at that point, but it is coming from love. And that's the important thing. Exactly. I love you so much. I, I love, love, you. love you so much. I love you so I gotta much. I got to go. I'd love to have you on again if you want to talk ever. Yeah, I also would love I to would have, love once she's um, going to school, I wanted to update uh, how things are going from that perspective. But I'd love, just love to have you on again and talk, just talk to you because you're amazing. Oh, I would absolutely love that. I miss Yay. you so much. I miss you too. Thank you so much for taking the time and talking to me and sharing your story. I mean, I... I've said it 14 times and I'll say it again. I absolutely admire you as a woman and a mom. And I'm so thankful that I met you and Emmy. And I, I, I don't talk to you guys daily, but I, I think of you guys all the time. All I the think time. of you all the time. And I feel like with social media, as much as it is a curse, I feel like we're still a part of your family because I see yeah, you. Yeah, and, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. that, I, I do love that aspect of it for sure. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm keeping up like with the family and get to see what's going on even though I can't be there physically. I love, and I get so excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, they did that. That is awesome. Or like, oh my gosh, that's great. You know, like I just get. Same. I get so excited about these things. And so. you're in Nashville, right? Yeah, we're over in Tennessee now. Oh my gosh, Jack is moving there. Oh, no way. I don't know if I'm Oops. supposed to say that, but... No way! Yes. I want to see if Angela would want to be on. She's an amazing mom, too. She is She is a badass. She is amazing. I would love to have her. If you talk to her um, and you want to ask her, I would love to have her on because, I mean, she's just a super mom, too. She really is. She really is. And she's gone through a lot of stuff and, and come out, you know... 
I'd love she, to hear her journey. She's so amazing. Yeah. She's, she's, a, she's an amazing one. She's another one that is such a blessing too, wow. for sure. Yeah. I'd love to I would love to, to come back on anytime. Oh my gosh. I would love to have you on. I'll, uh, I'll probably reach out to you in a little bit, maybe like a month or so and just see whatever. If you want to hop on, talk mom yeah. stuff or just talk about whatever. I just get excited to talk to you. I get excited to talk to you too. And thanks for saying, and it's so encouraging to hear that I'm an okay mom. Cause get even right though, now. you know, we put out all this fun stuff on social media, you still go to bed and you go, did I do the right thing? You're and doing then it's a great those, job. Yeah. But it's those moments like, you know, that she says, mommy, I love you. And thanks for caring. You know, <sighs> that you go, okay, I'm, I'm doing something right. You are. I, the, the light that shines through her is from your love. And I can't say it enough. Like the amount of love you pour into her, whatever happens day in, day out, little things like she is so loved and you've been able to give that to her that she'll be able to pass on to others. And just thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, and one thing is another really good, good, amazing thing for husbands. Okay. Take your daughters out on a date. Do oh. a weekly daddy daughter date night. Oh. Show them. Because as yeah. she's older now and she's liking guys, she knows now that a guy should open your door. A guy yeah. should a guy should, you know, be kind to you and and respectful of your feelings and yeah. ask you how you're doing and truly listen. So and we set that we example. That wow. She, yeah, we started mm. that when she was, I'd say probably three. And David would take her, you know, out to dinner. It was always rubies. It was so sweet. But he would open the door for her. He'd buy her flowers. He'd, you know, not all the time buy her flowers, but show her, you know. And so the thing is, later on in life, she's, I, I always say, I say, David, you're, you're setting her up because she's going to look for someone that's pretty spectacular. And good. Good. Yeah. We, we don't want her with some chump. No. No. Oh, no. that's when I would come in and be like, I mean, we need to talk. But I know she would, I just know it I'd won't happen. I'd be calling you going, her. you need to communicate with her right now. I book my ticket right away. Exactly. I'll be right there. Get, get exactly. a hot air balloon flight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, man, thank you so much for talking to me. I, I have to go, but I, I, I would love to have you on maybe even sooner. Just whenever yeah. you want to, I'd love to. And, uh, Pass my love over to Emmy and David, I and I will for I, sure. You're so amazing. Thank you for doing such a great job and setting such an example for so many others, but definitely for me. Oh, thank, thank you. you, and thank you for being so encouraging and loving. You've always been, and I, I truly feel that. And you're so. I mean, you're just such a special person to us. So thank you. Thank you so much. You guys are my family, so I love you guys. Same. <laughs> All right. Bye, Lane. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time. Love you. Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks, everybody. And I hope you guys all have a very good day. And I will see you next time.